be shy, subscribe to that guy. This is the longest class that I've had to do a review for so far, and holy shit. But yeah, you know the usual introduction. Sit down, relax, watch some Degrassi. Smoking on top fives. Stop playing, I'm that guy. Wesley's first moment in Degrassi is a seven minutes in heaven session with Claire that quickly turns awkward. Claire runs out, but before she does, she gives Wesley a hickey. That was the best minute in 42 seconds of my life. Wesley, that's weird. Wesley is best friends with Dave and Connor, and his first main storyline is when he goes on a date with Anya. You see, Wesley signs himself up for a bachelor contest in which people in the school can give money to go on a date with him. Let's start bidding at one dollar. Do I hear one dollar? I'll bid two dollars. So I've got two, do I hear three? So Wesley goes on a date with Anya in a few episodes. Meanwhile, Dave tries to be cool because Dave's main mission in the beginning is to be popular. So Dave starts playing basketball with the jocks, but Wesley's nerdy ass keeps cramping his style. Yeah, I get it. You don't think I'm cool enough to hang out with your new friends. You know what, Wes? I know you're not. So Wes tells Dave's new friends that Dave's dad is a cop, and now they all don't fuck with him. So Dave so badly wants his dickhead friends back, so he goes to get a taser from his dad's car and stuns Wesley. <laughs> Friendly note, if you have to impress people to be cool, then you probably don't fit in. Anyways, Wesley and Dave are still friends. Back to Anya. Wesley asks her on a date. Oh boy, yeah. Now Wesley is daydreaming about the date and is getting random boners in class. When Wesley finally goes on a date with Anya, literally every move she makes is turning him on. This date goes horrible. Back in seventh grade, a bunch of students write notes to their future selves. I was such a geek back then. And Wesley feels unfulfilled because he predicted that he'd have a car, a girlfriend, and a broken world record. But he does end up checking off one of the things on his list and gets a girlfriend. And I'm sorry, I don't really remember what her name was. So Wesley's dating... And things are mostly fine, except for the fact that Connor starts staring at her boobs. How dare you! Wesley is jealous because this other guy, Liam, is in their science group and he thinks Hannah likes Liam. He tries to show how cool he is by lying and saying he has a license. Wesley gets pulled over and now he has to wait an extra three years to get his license. You're a stupid dumbass. Hannah tells Wesley she still likes him though and they date off screen because we never see Wesley again. I wasn't even gonna include this guy, but I feel like he was a little important. He matches the normal description of the typical Degrassi bully. But the difference is Luke is Christian. Other than some normal bully stuff, Luke isn't the main focus again until he sexually assaults a Degrassi classmate. I really want to save this storyline for Zoe's character, so instead I'll skip to when Luke gets caught. I haven't mentioned it yet, but Luke is Becky Baker's bro. But when Becky finds out some incriminating info on Luke's phone, she does the right thing and tells on him. Now dinner at the Baker's is awkward. Luke is pissed at Becky because now he's on house arrest and probably will go to jail. Luke is charged with sexual assault and child pornography. The last time Luke is shown is in season 14 where he asks Becky for forgiveness, but she doesn't accept it. In season 12, Becky is transferred to Degrassi from Florida. I already previously mentioned that her brother Luke is a devoted Christian, and Becky is the same way. She and Eli are paired together to work on a school play. She announces the play that they'll be working on is Romeo and Juliet. The musical version. What? When Tristan auditions, Becky doesn't want him in the play. Tristan is sweet, but he seems... confused. What do you mean by that? Eli tells Tristan he got the part anyways because Tristan is good, and also he kind of wants to piss off Becky. I can't be part of something that depicts an alternative lifestyle choice as normal. A little later on, Becky is running this children's hunger booth with kind of good intentions, but really she just wants less people to go to the Romeo and Juice play. After Adam calls her out for being a bitch, she thinks twice about her actions. Adam asks Becky on a date, and she is thrilled. But then Jenna tells her Adam is a female to male transgender. He's a she? When they see each other at school the next day, it's extremely awkward. Then the science teacher pairs them together. So they work together on this project, but not really. Because of intolerance like yours, I've been thrown out of washrooms, beaten up bad. I would never do any but of that. But the stuff you say makes people think it's okay to bully kids who are gay or transgender or different in any way. And now Becky's perspective on life has changed. I changed my mind. 
Becky's all positive now, and she likes Adam again, but she kind of messed things up. So she's a little scared to make a move. Her parents quickly find out that Becky's got a boyfriend and ask him to come to dinner. Jenna tells Becky her parents will probably understand everything about Adam, so Becky tells them, Now Mrs. Baker and I would like you both to know that we'll support you on your path to healing. Oh no! Things go south, Adam leaves, Becky and Adam also break up because Becky feels like she needs to be fixed or something. But then they get back together like two episodes later. So the rest of season 12, Becky is pretty consistent, but in season 13, she's different. So we find out from Adam that Becky's gonna go to Florida for the summer to be a lifeguard. Adam is a little jealous, so Imogen tries to help him out a little bit. You still like girls, right? I'm open-minded. Well, then you better open your mind to the fact that Adam has a girlfriend. Oof. You can't be around her anymore. You don't trust me? I trust you. But still. Later on, when Adam FaceTimes Becky, some shirtless guy, Todd, is there. Who the hell is Todd? I think that's the guy stealing your girlfriend. Now Becky's posting these pictures on social media. Hmm. Okay. So then Adam messages Todd from Becky's account saying that Becky has a boyfriend. Sign her a dirtbag? Obviously, Becky finds out because, you know, she's in Florida with Todd. Super weird day, though. Face Range said someone accessed my account from Toronto. Weird. Becky breaks up with Adam. <laughs> okay. Adam sends apology flowers to Becky and she sends them right back destroyed. Later in the same episode, she texts him, I'm sorry, we should talk. And while Adam is texting and driving, he drives into a tree. This storyline is very sudden. He was right there in the hospital. Why did he have to die? I guess Jesus wanted him close. What a stupid thing to say. Becky's back at Degrassi now. Her and Imogen become friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep. At first, Becky isn't gonna say anything when she finds the video of Zoe being passed out on Luke's phone, but then a big commotion breaks out. It's not like you have any proof. I have proof it was him. After that, Becky tries to be official BFFs with Imogen, but then this girl Jack comes into Degrassi and Becky gets jealous. Becky's parents kinda hate her now because she ratted on her brother. Her parents also tell her that she should lie in court to protect her brother. Not so Christian now, are we? Oh, by the way, Becky doesn't lie in court, and her family definitely hates her now. So Drew and Becky have been cool recently. Drew feels bad for Becky because she recently lost her brother, and he recently lost Adam, his brother and Becky's former boyfriend. So then they kiss. Um, what the hell? They date but break up right away because Drew's got a child on the way. I will not be broken up with. I'm breaking up with you. And this apology smoothie is now a breakup smoothie. Then she dates Jonah, and he steals money from her. Yeah, Becky is not my fave. I want to be serious for a second and start off by saying RIP to Jamil French, and my feelings of the character have nothing to do with the actual actor who played him. Dave is related to Shantae and has been going to Degrassi for a while, but no one knows him. Dave starts doing random things to get noticed, but pisses off Bruce, the moose. Bruce embarrasses him, so then Dave pees in a bottle and pours it on Bruce's locker. Bruce ultimately wins because he throws a pee balloon at Dave, and now people know him. That's nasty. Dave tries hitting on Jenna and basically calls her his girlfriend before he actually even asked her out. One way or another, I'm gonna get a prize for my girlfriend. Mostly all of Dave's storylines, at least for the first two seasons, are, I wanna be popular. He chooses being popular over his friends a lot of the time, which makes him a shitty friend. Dave also really likes Allie, but he's deep in the friend zone. He calls her the hottest girl at Degrassi and she kisses him on the cheek, but they are not dating. However, later on when Allie likes Drew, she tells Dave about a guy she likes and Dave thinks it's him, but it's Drew, so he's bummed out. I almost forgot to mention, there's another Degrassi band called the Three Tenors, consisting of Wesley, Dave, and Connor. And this is the song that they made. I don't think anyone will ever pay to hear you sing. Then a girl finally likes Dave. And then he mocks her because she's too tall. What? But then Sadie and Dave eventually go out. After, Dave is on a Degrassi radio show with Adam, and they were pretty cool with each other. Until Dave is peeing in the bathroom, and he catches Adam staring at him. I gotta quit the show. Um, you haven't even started yet. I'm saying give it a week, 
You two are going to be the most popular guys at this school. You want to give that up? So Dave is peeing again. Majority of this conflict takes place in the bathroom. And this time Adam is peeing too, but at a urinal using this device. What is that? Nobody said you had to stare. Oh, God. Dude, my shoes. I'm sorry. So the next time when they're on the air. Now, not to get all politically incorrect, but should girls be allowed to use the guy's bathroom at school? So now Dave is kicked off the air and he's about to get canceled. After Dave has a talk with Adam in detention and he sees that Adam now has to use the handicapped bathroom again, he goes on the air and apologizes. Dave is still dating Sadie, but even he forgets because he still likes Allie, so he breaks up with Sadie. I dump your ass. Allie introduces Dave to her family and she tells him to act more proper. Proper. Properly. Dave feels out of place, he gets a little mad, but then Allie tells him she wants her parents to meet the real Dave. Things seem good with Allie and Dave, but when Allie is gone for the summer, he hooked up with some girl. Wait, did you have sex with her? However, Dave agrees to cut ties with that girl completely, so Dave and Allie look like they might work out, but then Jacinta comes to Degrassi and further complicates things. This is my girlfriend, Allie. So that's why you haven't been calling me back. Dave and Jacinta are in a car, and Dave says that they were a mistake, so she takes his phone and runs out the car. While she has his phone, she says she's gonna text Allie, and then Dave begs her not to. You really love her, don't you? I should text her again. Tell her what an amazing guy you are. Watch out! <laughs> the aftermath to this is that all of Jacinta's friends make a social media post saying that Dave is an asshole. Later on, most of Dave's storylines consist of the Romeo and Jules play. Allie and Dave are still dating, but there's no spark anymore, so they officially break up. Dave's last episode was in season 13. Connor is the godson of Mr. Simpson. Not that it really matters that much, but he is. Connor is misunderstood by many because he has Asperger's. Get away from me! He gets suspended. So Connor has been playing this RPG, Realm of Doom, and he has this video game girlfriend, Love Queen 16. Don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. He wants to meet up with her, but his friends tell him not to. They even tell Mr. Simpson, and he's mad. Probably having flashbacks to Emma in season one. Connor meets up with the old lady anyways, and he doesn't care that she's old, but once she tells him to go back to her place and touches his leg, he's out of there. Stop it! In season 11, Connor is a sex offender. He gets caught staring at Hannah's boobs, and later in the same episode, he starts stealing girls' panties. Glorious panties! <laughs> but then he gets caught and suspended. Connor starts playing football, and Mo is mad because he's better than him. Connor and Jenna start subtly flirting, and Connor asks Jenna out. They date and have a nice relationship. Though things are good, Allie keeps chilling with Jenna, and Connor wants more Jenna, but less Allie, so he tries getting Allie a boyfriend. This does not work. Connor thinks Jenna is mad at him. I'm not mad. What are you guys talking about? Claire whether her and Eli should get back together. Eli was being honest. He told Claire that she was annoying him, and if she didn't want him to break up with her, she should have stopped. Thanks for the advice, Connor. Now I'm mad at you. Then we don't know what we did. Jenna forgives him, though. One day, Jenna and Connor are having a double date with Allie and this douche, and Connor openly says he doesn't want to have sex. No, no, I don't want to have sex. Connor. They momentarily break up because Jenna feels unwanted, but then they get back together. Jenna gives him a makeover and they win king and queen. Connor graduates as the valedictorian of this class. When Jenna first comes to Degrassi, she gets close with Claire. At my old school, I was such a boyfriend stealer, especially with bad boy types. For a little while, there's a certain sexual tension between Jenna and KC, and Claire notices instantly. KC breaks up with Claire and is now dating Jenna. So Claire recently got this laser eye surgery and tells Allie, but Jenna thinks, hmm, Claire? Surgery? She must have got a boob job. So she spreads this rumor saying Claire got implants. She doesn't look any different. Well, someone's gonna have to find out for sure. Me? Me? You, <laughs> you, you mean me? What are you doing? I'm, I'm sorry, the tender? Wait. You think... I got a boob job? Jenna thinks Casey is cheating on her, probably because their relationship started with him cheating on Claire. He actually isn't cheating on her, yet. His mom has been reaching out to him, but Jenna doesn't know that, so she calls the number. 
Casey is mad at Jenna because she thinks she doesn't trust him. But in the same episode, he cools down and tells her about the situation with his mom. Jenna's been gaining weight recently and she's confused. <laughs> Allie then suggests that she take a pregnancy test. She also has this teen star audition. I guess they're like American Idol. And she bombs because she gets sick and throws up, but she gets a second chance and is selected to move on to the next round. Allie reminds her that she might be pregnant. Oh crap. I can't believe it, Allie. I'm pregnant and I'm a teenager. I'm one of those- Pregnant teenagers? <laughs> Jenna still wants to do teen star, and things are going great with KC now, so she doesn't want to tell him, but realizes she has to. I'll be with you every step of the way. Once you get the abortion, it'll all be over. Say what? Jenna contemplates having an abortion. However, she's already five months into her pregnancy, and the doctor tells her it'll be risky. So KC dumps her right after. Luckily, Jenna has a cool-ass brother, and he offers to help her out. And she's still doing teen mom, I mean, teen star. But with the current complication, Jenna tries hiding her pregnancy, but when she finds out that she's kind of bland and might get kicked off the show, she tells everyone that she's pregnant. I'm going to have a baby. Casey is mad because Jenna kind of told everybody on TV that, you know, Casey and her have a baby, but he doesn't really have a say right now. Anyways, Jenna is eliminated off the show. Are you fucking kidding me? Casey's mom tells Jenna she's going to help her out if she needs it, so now Casey kind of has to get involved. Surprise, surprise! Casey is not around very often, so Jenna is sad. A big misunderstanding happens between Sav and Jenna, leaving Jenna to think that Sav likes her. Jenna tells Holly J that she likes Sav and things are awkward because Holly J is low-key going out with him. Honey, save yourself the embarrassment. Sav will never go for you. Watch. Yeah, Sav doesn't like her. But KC comes back into the picture and they're back together again. Jenna doesn't like Bianca, most likely because Bianca stole Allie's man. You're a hypocrite. So Jenna is being kind of lenient with KC, allowing him to relax while she does the mom stuff. But after talking to Allie, she feels differently. You told me to play basketball. KC says he'll change. Spoiler alert, he never changes. Jenna has the baby. And now we got little baby Tyson to add to the cast. Jenna feels overwhelmed while Casey is still hanging out with friends. They argue, then Casey agrees to change. This happens a couple of times. Also, Jenna moves in with Casey and his mom. Casey's been working a lot recently, but she's still proud of him until she finds out that there's another girl at work. This girl at work? Yeah, Marisol. <gasps> oh. Casey cheats. I had so much fun at work last night. Me too. Aren't you glad you decided to stay? Cheater. But Jenna doesn't find out until a few episodes later. Good news! Jenna can go back to Degrassi. Once you're done work, we celebrate. Celebrate. I can go back to school. Really? Great. Why don't you just give me a bottle of scotch and a handgun to blow my fucking head off? At school, Jenna's talking to Allie, but in the corner of her eyes, she sees Casey getting in the car with Marisol. Is something going on between them? Something going on between who? Casey and Marisol. Uh. Just smile and wave, boys. But Dave snitches on Casey because he's not a good friend. Jenna and Casey argue. Tyson gets taken by child services. Jenna moves out and they break up. Jenna is pretty bummed out for a while, but never fear. When there's a recently single girl, Jake is here. Jake and Claire broke up not too long ago. So along with Jake and the fact that Jenna technically stole Casey, Claire is mad as fuck. I don't think her and Jake technically dated, but later on she says that they're just friends, so I guess they were just talking. Jenna's role slowly starts to shift at this point. She was mainly in the show as Allie and Becky's friend. Now Jenna's like the fake religious girl along with Becky, but then her and Connor date and I already covered their relationship. That's pretty much it. In season eight, Casey comes to Degrassi. Um, I think you're in the wrong place. This class is for gifted students. Hey. Fuck you. Casey plays basketball, but he's got some anger issues. Claire thinks he's a bad guy. Duh. Casey stops talking to her for a little while because he's mad at her. Also, whenever they try to talk, they just argue. We fight because we're afraid if we stop, we'll do this. Aww. Claire and Casey don't even really get a real chance to date before Jenna shows up. Jenna clearly has a motive here, and after unintentionally flirting, Casey breaks up with Claire. Just tell me one thing. How long have you liked her? I tried not to, Claire. Really, nigga? 
Jenna and Casey start their relationship shortly after, but recently Casey's basketball coach has been really weird. First, he gives Casey a beer. You want a beer? I think Casey's like 15 here, so that's weird, but eh, it's not that bad. Then coach starts watching porn with Casey. Then he gives Casey a gun? What? Then buys Casey a prostitute? <laughs> what, what, what the, the fuck? I don't really understand the storyline, to be honest. Casey tells Mrs. H, and Coach Carson is fired and arrested. We get some backstory about Casey's past. So Casey's been living at this group home, which we already knew about, but we didn't know about his mom, Lisa. A couple of years back, Lisa was doing hella drugs, and she lost custody of Casey. Also, she was in jail. Now she's out of jail and trying to regain custody of Casey. Casey takes his anger out on Mr. Armstrong's car, but Casey's mom stands up for him, so Casey is like, she loved me the whole time. So he lives with her. It's gonna be better this time. So much better. <laughs> hey, who left this bowl of onions here? Also, Jenna's pregnant, but she was in denial for a while. <laughs> that rhymes. So she's five months pregnant. She tells KC, and at first he's supportive because he wants her to get an abortion, but when she doesn't, he breaks up with her. You do whatever you want. I can't be involved. What? You're gonna make me go through this alone? I'm not gonna be here. KC thinks he's in the clear until Jenna says on live TV that she's pregnant. Now everybody knows. And KC comes back into the picture and isn't the best. When Jenna finds out Casey is cheating on her, she beats him with a guitar. They break up and then they give Tyson away to his new family. Casey visits Tyson and his new family and it's really sad to be honest. The last story Casey is a part of is also pretty damn sad. Casey tries setting up his mom with his tutor. Things are going well until Lisa tells him his dad is getting out of prison. Kevin, that's the dad's name, starts enabling Casey's mom a little bit. She hasn't had a drink in a few years, but now she's drinking with Casey's dad. What if next time he wants to smoke some crack? Crack is whack. Kevin also starts getting a little bit more violent. So Casey and his mom move away the next day. And this is also Casey's last episode in the show. The Imogen is quirky. At the beginning, she's in the drama class with Eli and is pretty much everywhere he is lurking in the background. Eli is the best writer in the class. Obviously. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> Eli is tweaking in the computer room and breaks shit. Imogen takes the blame and pretends she tripped. Then she lies to Adam and says Eli punched her. Eli Goldsworthy just punched me in the face. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. Imogen later tries to help Eli get over Claire so that he can get over her. Ha, ah, sorry, bad joke. Imogen accidentally reveals that she's been stalking Eli for a while and then tells him to stop acting crazy. So Eli's been having this play and one of the characters is based off of Claire. So Imogen starts copying Claire. Can I help you? Claire, where are you going? There's this little voice inside my head saying, bad idea. You hear voices too? <laughs> Imogen gets the part and now thinks Eli and her are dating. They are not dating. Let's go sit down, okay, Muffin? Stop calling me that. Eli finally does kiss Imogen for real, and the next day he tells her that he realizes that he still likes Claire. Pain. Imogen thinks that the only way she's gonna get with Eli is if Claire's out of the picture, so she frames her. Mr. Simpson, this, this is ridiculous. I have no idea who those got there. Eli is mad and yells at her. It seems like Imogen is over Eli for now. Imogen needs a new friend, so she gets cool with Bianca for a sec, but then Bianca steals money from her because she needs to pay some drug dealers. Her next attempt at getting a bestie was when she tried being cool with Fiona. At first, Fiona doesn't really like her. Imogen, I would love, love to sit with you, but... Weird! They have theater together, but Fiona's trying to be popular, and Imogen is that weird girl who is pretending to be Claire, so yeah. Marisol and Katie are having a party, but Fiona feels bad, so she invites Imogen. They don't like Imogen. Then they decide to do a prank on Degrassi. Imogen tags along and is the only one who gets caught. Eventually, Fiona is guilty as fuck and convinces Marisol and Katie to fess up. When Fiona told us she was there too, we convinced her to confess. We couldn't let Imogen take all the blame. You lying ass bitch. So only Fiona and Imogen get caught. Now they're friends. Fiona sets up Imogen and Eli. Imogen tells her whole class that Eli is bipolar and he gets mad and breaks her camera. Then he tries calling her, even shows up to her house because he thinks that she might be cheating, but no, she's hiding from him because he's possessive. They decide to be friends instead. Fiona and Imogen make a carnival while also getting back at Marisol. I 
Next season, Fiona is comfy being an open lesbian. She's a lesbian and you're a lesbian? Is this heaven? I thought it was high school. <laughs> But Imogen is not. They agree to take things slow. Imogen loses her dog and finds out her dad has dementia all in one episode. Poor Imogen. Imogen also had problems with her mom, but I'm gonna skip. Imogen finds out Fiona might go to Italy after high school. She's also supposed to graduate, but then she gets left back for failing all of her classes. Man, I took out my report card today, man. I looked at it, man, I had all else on it. So she's all sad and does Fiona dirty by impersonating her. Fiona and Imogen fight, and then they make up, but then they break up because reasons. In season 13, Imogen has a weird love triangle with Adam and Becky. Then Imogen is fighting about the dress code because she forgets to wear a bra to class. You're kicking me out of class because I forgot to wear a bra? It's distracting. Imogen helps Detective Becky in her chase to find the Degrassi assaulter. Her and Jack date smoke weed together. A lot of people smoke weed in the later seasons. Weed is tight. Weed is tight. That's awesome. That's awesome. Weed yeah. is awesome. Many of Imogen's later plot lines deal with her and Jack, and I'll save those for Jack's character because she doesn't really have anything else to talk about. Imogen could have easily been a side character, but they actually took some time to develop her. So good. Though his name is Mike, they mostly call him Dallas. In season 12, Dallas is living with Drew because they're best friends. I've never truly known if they're like half brothers or cousins or something, but I'll just say they're friends. Mm -hmm. Why don't you come to my game tomorrow? I've got two extra tickets and I don't want them to go to waste. I like watching sports. So you were using me? I take all that personally. Dallas and his fellow hockey players destroyed this garden that Jake and Katie have been working on. Who would do this? Katie confronts him about it. Hey, admit what you did. What do you have on me? Nothing. Soon after, Dallas is talking with Claire and he gets the wrong idea and kisses her. Dallas is kinda horny. So now Dallas has beef with Katie and by association Jake, and also Claire and by association Eli. So when there's a surprise party for Claire at Fiona's house, Dallas and his team brawls with Eli and Jake. He tries getting Eli's place shut down, but he is unsuccessful. Allie is sad because school's been stressing her out recently. Dallas tells her about these pills he used to take to stay focused. He tells her she probably shouldn't take him, but she does. Allie and Dallas are friends now, but Allie doesn't want to date Dallas because she doesn't want to date a bully. And I do not date guys like that. If you ask me personally, do I think Dallas is a bully? Yes. He tells Cam he's selfish because Cam doesn't want to play anymore. This is the last conversation he has with Cam before Cam's suicide. Dallas feels guilty, attempts to jump off a roof, but Fiona talks him down. Also, Allie and Dallas make up. They're cool now and even have a date set up, but Dallas cancels the plan. Turns out, Dallas has a kid. What a twist! He doesn't want to tell Allie because he doesn't think she'll understand, but she finds out, obviously. By the way, the kid's name is Rock. So, Rocky like the boxing movie? It's actually Rock. Like The Rock? The Rock thanks you for that. Later on in the season, Dallas has been missing classes and drinking that lean too much. Drew is concerned and they argue. Dallas is also cut from the hockey team. Originally, Dallas was in the class of 2013, but he gets left back. Finally though, Allie and Dallas are good friends and Dallas is much more mature now. However, even though Allie is single, she just got out of an abusive relationship with that piece of shit Leo. Dallas wants to beat his ass, but instead he goes with Allie to Leo's house and she gets some closure. Allie and Dallas finally start dating. Woo! Allie doesn't want to have sex with Dallas though because sex ruined her past relationships. Dallas is mad because he thinks like she doesn't take their relationship seriously enough. Dallas graduates toward the end of season 14 and is still dating Allie. Adam is first shown as a cool person just trying to have a good time. He gets along with Eli, Sav, and Bianca and they go to a concert. Fitz bullies Adam, but Adam and Eli get back at him. Adam thinks Bianca is hot. Why do you have tampons? This is the first time that it's revealed to viewers that Adam is an FTM. I'm an FTM, female to male transgender. Adam flirts with Bianca again, and Bianca suspects that Adam is hiding something, so she rips his shirt open. Did you miss the sign on the door? No, I saw it, thanks. It means guys, and uh, we heard something from B. This results in Adam getting jumped in the hallway. Mama Torres is furious and tries to transfer Adam, but he doesn't want to because they just switched schools. On top of that, Adam's grandma is coming to visit and Adam's mom wants him to dress like Gracie. 
Gracie is Adam's dead name. He does, but clearly hates it, so later on, him and a few others burn Gracie's clothes and pictures. At first, Adam is happy being friendly with Claire and Eli until he feels like the third wheel. Why do guys always ditch their friends the second they get new girlfriends? Adam must have been really, really mad because he starts hanging out with Fitz. Fitz is like, hey, you want to join our fight club? First rule of fight club? There is no fight club. That's the opposite of what the saying is. Adam is interested until Fitz shows him that he's going to be fighting Bianca because Fitz sucks. Adam responds by punching Fitz and laying his bitch ass out. Adam starts crushing on Fiona, but Drew also crushes on her. This happens from time to time. Fiona ultimately likes Adam, but for the wrong reasons, so they end up not working out. I already discussed the Dave versus Adam plot, so instead I'll talk about the time that Adam liked Katie for a bit. To be honest, it's not really crucial to Adam's story, but the scene when he wants to get the surgery to have his breast removed is. But once Mama Torres finds out, one of the main reasons he wants to get it is because of a girl she denies him. But yeah, Katie rejects Adam anyways. And then Drew dates Katie right after. Vince is currently beefing with Drew and shows up at Degrassi with a gun. He points the gun at Drew or Bianca, I'm not sure, probably Drew. But instead, Adam gets shot. But Adam is fine. You guys wanna see my scar again? No, no Adam. In season 12, Adam's stories calm down for a bit until Becky shows up. Becky and Adam instantly connect when they first meet, but when Becky finds out that Adam is transgender, she gets mad and ignores him, but they're already partners for this project, so unfortunately she can't. While they're talking, Adam blows her mind. They date after this. To sum it up, Adam and Becky date, but Becky's parents are stupid. They don't last. In the meantime, Adam wants to join the men's volleyball team, but his mom doesn't want him to. Eventually, Audra is okay letting him join the team and taking the testosterone pills. Oh no, Becky's back. Becky and Adam make up, things seem fine, but nah, things are not fine. So yeah, I don't know what happened with Adam's storyline, to be honest. I was really curious why the fuck his death felt so abrupt, and honestly, felt pointless, to be honest. And the only thing that I could really find out was that the actor that played Adam didn't re-sign the contract, so that sucks. Allie is the younger sister to former Degrassi student Sav. She is also best friends with Claire. At the beginning, Claire and Allie have a funny ass friendship. Almost similar to JT and Toby. I know people usually compare them to Emma and Manny, but to me, Emma and Manny always low key dissed each other. Allie also has a big crush on Johnny. Johnny likes her too, but he's too cool for all of that. They secretly start dating because Johnny doesn't want to date a niner publicly. Don't be scared, homie. Though Allie is friends with Claire, Connor, and KC, she constantly gets annoyed by Connor. Got you the first time, Connor. Allie is just walking through the halls, being slick as usual. Someone's bitter about being kicked off Power Squad. Allie would go on to regret these words. Holly J blows up Allie's spa by asking Johnny if they're dating. Heard you in the backwoods are an item. Johnny's like, Who'd you dumb about? Allie is embarrassed, and now she hates Holly J. So she makes a social media group titled, I Hate Holly J. Allie apologizes and Holly J doesn't accept. You got your wish. Oh, what, you gonna cry? You gonna cry now? By the way, Allie is still dating Johnny and she wants to take things a little further, but he stops her. Johnny doesn't want to have sex and things to get weird, but Allie promises that it won't. So they have sex and things get weird. Now Allie doesn't want to talk to Johnny right now. Wait a minute. They agree to take things slow. Jenna comes in the picture and Allie is worried because she thinks Jenna might try to steal Claire from her but actually she's trying to steal Claire's boyfriend. Allie is really cute with Johnny in public. He hates that. When she shows the school how nice and thoughtful he can be behind the scenes, he gets mad and exposes her nudes to Bruce. I think you two need to report to the office immediately. Allie and Johnny break up, but Johnny found out he has genital warts and he suggests to Allie that she gets checked out because they had sex. She gets confused because Johnny told her that he lost her virginity to her. Right? Not exactly. Now Allie's gotta get tested for STDs. It might not have been my first time, but it was my first time with someone I actually liked. Oh, shut up, nigga. Allie's been single for like 10 episodes, so Dave sees his opportunity, but fails. Maybe we can just be friends instead? Come on. Allie and Drew start hooking up for a little bit and Allie's confused where they stand. Drew lets her know that they're just friends with benefits. Drew's grades are fucking horrible. So he's not trying to have a relationship added on top of that. Allie then tries to help him by writing a paper for him, but then he gets mad. So they stop hanging out for a little bit. 
But then Drew realizes he really does like Allie, so they make it official. They date for a very short time, and their relationship is only memorable because of what goes down in the boiler room. Your boyfriend and I got intimate in the boiler room, but all my clothes stayed on. The next time they're back at school, Allie gets back at Bianca by going on her phone and sending her nudes to everyone in her contacts. Bianca, you seem upset. I got suspended because somehow you sent those pictures around. If only you could prove it, huh? Here's your proof. <laughs> Allie gets in trouble, her parents get called in, the Bandaris are fucking pissed. They get so mad that they make her change schools. So Allie is no longer going to Degrassi. Instead, she's going to an all-girls school. You see, her parents think that because Allie is boy crazy, there could be no other problems at this new school. Ooh, hold this for a sec. There's still problems. But this time, it isn't all Allie. Instead, it's actually this girl that she's friends with. Now she's grounded. Allie runs away and doesn't tell anyone. It's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? Sav is looking for her and eventually finds her at Johnny's apartment. She still doesn't want to come home though because her parents are not understanding at all. So they tell her things are going to be different this time. Allie returns home and she goes back to Degrassi. Now she's much more calm, less boy obsessed, and less entertaining. Dave has been crushing on Allie for like two seasons and they finally start dating. See that? 50 no's and a yes means yes. Unfortunately, Allie has to go to the science program for the summer, but her and Dave are technically still dating, but he cheats on her. She's sad, she kisses Jake. Of course she kisses Jake. You kissed my boyfriend. Now Claire's annoyed at Allie, and they're not friends for a few episodes. You're nothing to me now. Dave apologizes to her for cheating, so they run it back again. Allie thinks she's pregnant, but she isn't. Also, I haven't mentioned it yet, but her and Jenna are really close friends sometimes, even closer than her and Claire. Dave and Allie kind of grow apart, so they break up. Now Allie's popping Adderalls like candy because she's having trouble staying focused, but really she just needs sleep. I don't really want to cover the Allie and Leo relationship, but I have to. Allie meets Leo in Paris, and it seems like the perfect love story. I'm honestly surprised how long they dated. It seemed much shorter in my head, but it actually lasted for a pretty long time. And it's because Allie gave this man like five chances. Now Dallas is different and Allie gives him another chance and they start dating. To be honest, Allie's stories get a lot worse after she's no longer reckless. Thanks a lot, Mr. Simpson. She dates Dallas and they're a nice couple, but I already talked about it. So here's a funny depiction of Claire and Allie's relationship. Can you just try and have fun, mingle, dance? Nope, just don't do that. Drew walks into the da and says, What's up? To Sav and Peter. He's the new kid. At first, Drew has a petty beef with Riley, and after he threatens to out Riley when he sees him with Zane, Riley ties him to a flagpole and strips him. Right after that, he starts dating Allie. However, Bianca shows up, starts getting in Drew's head. Drew cheats on Allie with Bianca, but who cares because he's dating Bianca now. Some of Drew's friends hate Bianca for obvious reasons. Besides, we've got a big game. All right, you don't need any distractions. Says the guy with the pregnant girlfriend. Bianca's like, fuck your friends and your basketball game. Let's go take some shrooms. Are you high? <laughs> nope, I'm fine. I don't believe you. In season 11, Drew goes through it. When Bianca's ex gets out of prison, he tries getting back with her. She declines his offer. After he tries to sexually assault her, but Drew helps her out and Bianca kills him. Then Vince shows up and gives him an ultimatum. Work for him now because they killed one of his drug dealers or die. They originally go with the first plan, but Drew decides to tell the police because he'd rather not sell drugs. Bianca and Drew also break up because Drew wants to be far away from her. Anyways, the people find him and... Please, please don't kill me. This haunts Drew for a long time. So he starts developing a love for fighting. At first, he and a few of the boys have a secret fight club going on, but it gets shut down once Mr. Simpson finds out. Now that Drew can't fight at school, he starts going to an underground fighting place. Katie eventually helps Drew get out of this mental funk by teaching him karate. They also start dating. Bianca's in a bad situation, and Drew still cares about her a lot, so he tries to help her out, but Vince is pissed and brings a gun to prom, tries to shoot Drew, but he misses. So now Vince is in jail, Drew is dating Katie, and Bianca is safe. Life is good for Drew Torres. But Katie though? Nah. Nah. I know Katie started spiraling a little, and I'm sure that that played a huge factor into Drew not wanting to be with her anymore. 
But I don't know, I feel like once Bianca came back, Drew was mentally checking out. Katie is in the hospital and Drew and Bianca. Now all Drew's gotta do is dump Katie. What did I do? Nothing. So there's someone else? Courtney. Courtney. Now they're broken up, but Drew gets drunk. When he was drunk, he had sex with Katie and they momentarily got back together. It's, it's a whole mess. Now he has to break up with her again. Drew doesn't like school and now he's working at the mall, so he drops out. Yeah, drop out Drew. He also moves out because Audrey don't play that shit. Now he lives with Fiona. He also asks Bianca to marry him. Drew moves out and goes back to Degrassi. Ho oh, oh, ho, it's drop out Drew. Can't call him that anymore. Now Drew even runs for class president and is way more involved in school. When Adam dies, Drew is sad, obviously. He blames Becky. On top of that, him and Bianca are broken up now after she goes to college. He kind of has something with Zoe, but I'm gonna talk about that later because this video is long as fuck. Instead, let's talk about his relationship with Claire. Ooh, a lot of people don't like this one. So Drew and Claire have been pretty close recently, mostly because of the presidential stuff. Sound familiar, Sav and Holly J? Previously, they kissed right when Drew and Bianca broke up, but it was like heat of the moment stuff. So not really that serious. But now Drew is single and Claire and Eli's relationship sucks. So now they actually make out and have the sex. But they don't date because Drew doesn't want to be a rebound. Drew works for Mr. Hollingsworth, but who cares? I already said that Drew always crushes on the same people Adam does, but uh, this is a little different. When Drew starts dating Becky, it's weird. Like honestly, it kind of kills Drew's character for me a little bit, not gonna lie. Not just this, but the whole Claire pregnancy thing, like seriously, like why did they do this? Becky and Drew break up, I already talked about it, and honestly, I don't know what they did to my boy Drew, I'm just gonna end it here. Claire is shown in the background of a few episodes from season 6 and season 7, and she's the younger sister of Darcy. But don't worry, it won't really matter too much in the grand scheme of things, because once Darcy leaves the show, she's basically forgotten. This is my sister Claire, she's in grade 9. Uh, it's a gifted class. No! At first, Claire and Casey hate each other, but really they like each other. Though Claire and Allie are best friends, they view life through different lenses, especially when it comes to boys. Allie is fantasizing about being in a relationship and Claire is completely focused on school. Let's see how that is in a few seasons. One day, Claire tries on Darcy's clothes and all these men start drooling over her. So what's your name, cutie? Allie. I meant your friend. Wasn't that crazy? Totally. It was like I didn't even exist. We should get started on our chemistry homework. Well, look how the rules have changed. Casey likes Claire, but Claire is judgmental as shit. They date for a little while, but Casey is literally cheating on Claire in front of her with Jenna. He breaks up with Claire pretty soon after this. Claire is Madame Degrassi and writes some horny fan fictions based on Declan. Oh. Are, are you all right? I'm fine. Before I go into the real Claire stuff, I just want to show you one of my favorite early Claire scenes. Starting with sex toys early, little Edwards. What would Jesus say? That masturbation is normal and no one should be embarrassed about it. And if you tried it once in a while, maybe you wouldn't be so mean. Claire is considering wearing her glasses again because the people at Degrassi are all up in her business. Oh, my glasses! <laughs> Uh-huh, honey. Little did we know it would last on and off for four seasons. They begin hanging out and dating, but then Fitz comes in and clearly is trying to mess with their relationship, but Claire is really nice and kind of oblivious to the situation. I don't feel like talking about the Fitz situation again because it doesn't really matter. Dude's a menace. During the whole Fitz saga, Claire really started to understand how obsessive Eli is. More on that in a few. So Claire's parents are getting a divorce and she's really sad. I guess Darcy doesn't care though. Who? Now she's actively trying to get her parents' attention and then she has a little uh, makeover. Who are you? Eli is utterly confused and a little annoyed because Claire's making Eli seem like the bad guy to piss off her parents. Eli and Claire are fine though, but not for long. She starts hearing more things about his past and she's kind of seeing some of the bad sides of Eli. Claire's trying to get some space, but he keeps trying to get closer. You're suffocating me. 
Eli is haunted by the passing of his ex-girlfriend, but he still really loves Claire, and he's clearly mentally unstable right now, so he crashes his car in an attempt to make Claire happy. Now why would he do that? Claire's happy he's alive, but she feels manipulated, so they break up. Next season, Eli is emotionless. I don't give a fuck. And Claire does not understand why. Did three months mean nothing? Did you flip a switch and erase me from your memory? It took you a year! A year to get over your ex! Did you ever love me at all? Jake moved in and is most likely gonna be her future stepbro, so naturally, they kiss. The next day at school, Eli tells Claire that the only reason he has no feelings is because he's taking antidepressants or something. I'm too lazy to look it up. Claire wants to join a club and stop thinking about boys so much. She decides to join the newspaper club, but the club leader, Katie, hates her. Katie, can we talk for a second? I have soccer practice. Katie doesn't like Claire because she thinks Claire's dramatic. I am not drama. <laughs> of course. Of course. Of course. After further consideration, Claire does work for the newspaper, but there's a catch. I just got a text that the grade 11 drama class has chosen the writer for the school play. Eli something or other? You know him, right? But maybe you've what? Is there a problem? Catch me outside, how about that? This gives a reason for Claire and Eli to interact without dating. Then Imogen's around and loves Eli, but who cares because Claire and Jake are dating now. Some more stuff with Eli's play, blah, blah, blah. Back to Claire and Jake, their parents are getting married. Jake breaks up with her. I don't know what to say. Jake and Allie kiss. What? Claire is mad at Allie and takes Jake back. They break up two episodes later because they're step-siblings. Claire is mad when Jake starts talking to Jenna, and then Claire moves in with like this cult or something, I don't, I don't know. She kisses Eli at the end of season 11, so now they're dating again. Yeah, what else is going on? Oh yeah, so there's this whole hashtag stuff Claire says stuff. Now Claire's working for this guy, Asher. At first she's thrilled, but then... What are you doing? Come on, Claire. No, I'm... Okay, wait. I, I want to leave. Claire, you're overreacting. No! If you care about your career, you'll keep your mouth shut. Asher spins this around and fires Claire because he says that she's obsessing over him. He's lying. Did you say, I love Asher Shostak? During that whole plot, Claire was doing a report on the hockey team. Sometime after that, Dallas asks Claire if she wants a beer. So let me paint you this picture real quick. Claire is drunk as fuck off of one beer. Lightweight. And she basically tells Dallas about the whole situation. You know, Asher kissing Claire and touching her, making her feel uncomfortable. So Dallas thinks that this is the right time to kiss her. Oh! Shortly after this, she tells Eli what happened with Asher. So up to this point, Claire has done nothing wrong, obviously. But when she starts trying to force Eli to frame Asher with her, I don't know, uh, I think that's kind of fucked up. You want to do that right now? I know you're busy, but every day I let this go, I just feel worse. Translation, I know you're busy, but I don't care. Now she's trying to get back at Asher by framing him for having teens nudes on her computer, but ultimately she doesn't go through with it. When Eli finds Cam dead, he smokes weed. Claire asks him to stop hiding from his problems. They break up. We're gonna get through the rest of this pretty quickly. Claire and Drew are running for president. Eli and Claire get back together during prom. Eli graduates and goes to college. Claire is sad. Claire finds out she has cancer. Where is Darcy at? At first, Eli is good at this long distance relationship thing, but then he does cheat on Claire. Claire then cheats on Eli. They try to work it out. They don't. She breaks up with him. She has sex with Drew. Not too much later, she finds out that she's pregnant. Am I pregnant? Am I pargant? Is the baby's Drew's or is it Eli's? At first, she thinks it's Drew's, but it's revealed to be Eli's. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter because Claire has a miscarriage. Claire graduates, and her and Eli live happily ever after. This video took forever. My favorite from this class is most likely Drew, but I'm gonna be honest, the last like two seasons of Drew were so boring, and if I'm being honest, they kinda sucked. But I guess he's still my favorite. Who was your favorite from this graduating class? There's a lot to choose from. For my next Degrassi class of video series, I'm gonna combine the classes of 2015 and 2016. You'll see why. But yeah, peeps, I think I'm gonna go take a nap now. Really didn't wanna get my heart broken, so I hung out with you instead of Jake. Um, but 
Who am I kidding? I mean, you probably have a million girls chasing after you, right? You know it. 